Hi, I'm Mr. Olivier and today we're going to learn about some traditional canoe building. Uh, we're going to meet a First Nations individual named Punuk who builds his own canoes. Let's find out more about how a canoe is built. A bill up in Benoyeko. My name is Pinock, I'm from Kitagon Zibi, Algonquin, and I'm, uh, I'm just here to show people how my ancestors lived earlier, in earlier days. I, I'm very impressed with the knowledge of my ancestors for selecting only four trees from this part of the country where we have the most variety of trees here, most species of trees are in, is in this area here. And they chose the bark, the birch tree, for the bark, which supplied us with our habitation, our mode of transportation, our cooking pots, our containers for storing stuff. That, that birch bark gave us all that. Then there's the spruce tree, which gave us the roots to, to lash all our things together. And that's the only thing that holds our canoe together is the spruce roots. And the spruce gum to prevent the water from coming into the, into the, into the canoe. The bark itself is totally waterproof, so you don't apply anything to that. The gum is just used for the incision of make because temp the canoes were always made with one piece of bark. It's just a one piece structure. We make incisions and want to get some cut to it. The next tree that we deselected was the ashwood tree. The ashwood is very important in the part that it gave us all the other things we needed to, for survival. We need it for our snowshoes in the winter time, and we use it for our sleighs, our toboggans, in the summertime for our paddles. Uh, but our drums were made from that. We made hand drums, we made the rounds of it. Anything that we wanted to form with the ashwood, it was good because it works the same way as the cedar. There's no tools needed for these materials. It's all split down to size. And most other trees don't do that. So they select these four, uh, the, uh, these trees because they are able to do them with just a bone and stone tools. We didn't have any metal as part of the country. So it was all bone and stone. So that it's, it's just, just, a, just a selection material. It's amazing, you know, the way they came about that. You know, to, to be able to survive in a harsh environment and do it very well with very little tools and stuff, you know, so it's, it's quite, quite remarkable. I totally enjoy working with it because that's my ancestors that invented that, you know, and uh, when I see the, the engineering that went into it and, uh, and, and the simplicity in which it was designed and made, it's quite ingenious, you know, the way that the canoe comes together. So what are the different kinds of wood that you used in the, in the preparation of this boat? This canoe here, we use birch bark for the shell. That's the, from the white birch tree. Mm -hmm. We just harvest the bark off of the tree and we use that for the shell. Traditionally it's one piece of bark, but we make gores along the side so we get a, a little curve to it. The next material we use on that, on that thing would be cedar. The in whales, the out whales, the caps. The, the sheeting and the cedar is all cedar. The only thing that we use next one is ash wood. This is the torch. But ash wood, we use that for snowshoes, etc. Different different items as well. But for the canoe, ash wood for the torch, because there's no seats in these things. You're kneeling down, but if you're kneeling down, you can kind of lean back on this. It's more stronger than cedar is. When we first start the canoe, we have this shape that we use. That's, this, this actually is your canoe. That's where you decided how many ribs you're going to put in, how the width of it and the length of it. The canoe is symmetric, so whatever you see here, you will see on this side. The amount of ribs will always be the same, and the distance between the torso will always be the same. So it's a very simple design, and that's what you start with. That's your canoe, and that's all cedar. But then later, after it's all sewn up and stuff, and you're starting to put the sheeting and ribs in, you change these temporary ones, you put in the ashwood, ashwood torso, just for the strength. Then the next thing we needed was the spruce root. So this here that lashing together is a spruce root. That's the only thing that holds your canoe together. I can remove all the parts in this canoe. Oh can, wow. I can take all the ribs out. I can take all the sheeting out of that thing. It's just pressure held. That's how pressure ingenious held. this thing is. When you, when you put in the ribs, they're angled a lot like this here, but very secure. But that bark will stretch. You come back a few hours later the next day and you tap the ribbon a little bit more. 
let the bark stretch some more. Eventually you'll get this thing in place. When it's in that position there, this bark has now been stretched to its max. Wet or dry, it will retain its shape, but in turn the pressure of the bark against the ribs holds everything together. Now that's ingenuity, I think, you know. It is. No nails, yeah. no screws, no glue, nothing in there. But to seal it, we use spruce gum, like from the spruce tree as well. That gum there, we just harvest from an injured tree, comes out, we melt it down, filter through a cloth, and we get a resin. And the resin, we add fat to it, and we apply it to the, to the canoe. Traditionally, we use bare fat. I use Crisco Tender Flake. It's easier to open a package for the lard instead of killing a bear and skinning it and all that, so it's a lot easier. But this can be used in its natural form. Like it, it takes very low heat to, to make it melt. See, it's starting to melt now. And I can take that and I want it to fill a hole. Even if you had a canvas canoe, you would just put that on and it would be waterproof. That, that seals, the, seals it from water coming in. So it's a very nice little vessel that you can go into nature. Today, since it's available, we can get an ax, a knife, a crooked knife, and a, uh, this is what they call a crooked knife, a bokadogan in my language. That's just a, that tool that I use a lot of, because I use it to split my wood, to shape my wood and to split it. I use, I use the bokadogan for that. That's just an awl that okay. they use just to separate the fibers of the bark. So when I'm sewing, I will take that and I separate the fibers of the bark, and in doing so, I uh, root here. It's a little, it's a little big. But this here just spruce root. I can split this again to make it a little, a little finer. Then I'll point it again. And then I'll take my awl and get this hole going, insert the root into there, pull it through, and that is how you do your, your sewing. That's how you lash, you lash your canoe together. That's the only thing that's holding your canoe that's together. All the other parts, it's all pressure held. Wow. So it's, a, it's a real nice little, little vessel. But all our ancestors adapted well. Yeah, I have a lot of pride in my in my ancestors. This is awesome. Well, thank you, Panuk. Thank you very welcome. much. It was my pleasure. I always enjoy sharing my culture to uh, awesome <laughs> to uh, other people. You know, because it's yeah. something that we're not well known in this country. It's our country, and we're not we're not we've never been really known to exist here. So I enjoy telling people that we are a, a, a nation that you know had. Had a lot of intelligence involved with it, you know, and we're still here. Try to get rid of us, but we're still here, you know. That's so. right.